Okay then gang, so the first step in all of this is to create a Firebase project. And we do that from the Firebase website, which is firebase.google.com. Now you need a Google account first of all, so make sure you sign up for one of those. And then once you have one, go to your console by clicking on this link in the top right of the page. Now this console is where you're gonna create all of your Firebase projects from. You can see I've got two already, these two right here, but I'm gonna create a new one for this series. Now we need to give this project a name. I'm gonna call it Ninja Cloud Functions since that's what we're gonna be learning about. Then click on continue. Now scroll down here. We don't really wanna enable Google Analytics for this project, but if you did, you can keep that checked. I'm gonna create the project and that's just gonna take a few seconds to do. Okay then, so once that's done, click on continue. And now it's gonna take you to the dashboard for your new project. So the first thing we wanna do is click on this button right here. This means that we want to add Firebase to a web project. If it's an iOS project, it's this button, Android, this button. So let me click on this. And first of all, we need to register an app. So I'm gonna call this tutorial requests. That's basically what the app is gonna be all about, requesting tutorials. And I'm gonna click on this, also set up Firebase hosting for this app because eventually we're gonna deploy this to Firebase hosting as well. And then I'm gonna register the app. All right, so it's asking us to copy and paste this code right here, which is the Firebase SDK and also this initialization script into our body. Now, I'm not gonna do that just yet. We can get this later on. I'm gonna carry on with the installation and finish this process first, then we'll come back to this. So click on next and it's telling us the first thing we need to do is say install Firebase tools. Again, we'll come back to that later on, but basically this is gonna install the Firebase CLI so we can easily create Firebase projects on the front end and hook up to this back end later on, but we will do that shortly. Click on next. Again, these are just the different steps we will take later on and I will explain these as we go forward. For now, just continue to console and that's our app added to this Firebase project. Now, if you wanted to see the details of this app, you can click on it right here, this one app, and then go to tutorial requests, this little cog to go to the project settings. And it tells you all about your project right here, including this snippet, which we are gonna use in a second. Okay, so the next step is to install Firebase tools on our computer, which is gonna allow us to create Firebase projects on the front end, which can then communicate with our Firebase backend. So to do that, I'm gonna open up a command prompt and then inside here, I'm gonna say npm install. And by the way, this is why you need Node installed on your computer because we are using the Node package manager, npm, to install Firebase tools. If you don't have Node installed on your computer, definitely do that first, otherwise this won't work. So npm install hyphen g because we're gonna install this package globally on our computer, meaning we can use it anywhere. And then it's Firebase hyphen tools. So press enter and that's gonna install that package for us. Okay, so now that's done, the next thing we need to do is navigate to the directory where we want to create our Firebase project. So I'm gonna CD into documents, I'm gonna CD into tuts, and then I'm gonna create a directory here by saying MKDIR stands for make directory, and then I'm gonna call this Firebase hyphen functions. Press enter and I'm gonna CD into that project I just created Firebase functions, and this is where I'm gonna create my Firebase project. Now, first of all, if this is the first time you've used Firebase tools on your computer, you do need to log in first of all. So to do that, say Firebase login. That's gonna open up a new window and you'll be able to log in to Google Firebase through that window. Once you're done, you can come back here and run Firebase init to create a project. So I'm gonna do that. And then this is gonna ask us a series of questions. So first of all, it's gonna initialize a Firebase project in this directory. Yep, that's fine. And then it's asking us which services we want to use. So I'm gonna scroll through these and press space on any one that I wanna use. So first of all, we do want a Firestore database. This one right here, not the top one, which is the real-time database. We're gonna use the Firestore, which is still real-time. We also want Firebase functions and we also want hosting. So just those three, then press enter. Now it's asking us 
whether we want to link up with an existing project that we've created on the back end or to create a new one. Well, we've already created one over here, so I'm just going to select the top option, use an existing project, and it's going to ask us which one that we want to connect to. So it's going to be Ninja Cloud Functions for us, press enter, and you'll see that we get an error. And this says that the cloud resource location is not set for this project, but the operation you're attempting to perform in Cloud Firestore requires it. So basically, we haven't set up a Firestore on the back end, and we're saying we want to use it on the front end, so we need to do that first of all. I'm going to go to Database over here to do that, and it's going to give us a couple of options, either to create a Firestore or a real-time database. We're going to use Firestore, so click on this Create Database right here, and we're going to start in production mode so it locks down our data, and someone from another server or the front end can't access our data then. So click on Next, and then click on Done, and this is going to create the Firestore database for us. might just take a few seconds. Okay, so now we have the database set up on the back end. Hopefully, if we run through this process again, we shouldn't get this error. So I'm just going to press Up to go to Firebase init again, press enter to initialize this project and hopefully now this will work. So yes, we want to proceed in this directory. We're gonna set up Firestore, functions and hosting, press enter, and we're gonna use an existing project that's gonna be Ninja Cloud Functions and now we don't get that error. So it's asking us what file should be used for Firestore rules. Now Firestore rules are basically how we allow access to our database from the front end. So we'll see all about that later on. So I'm just gonna press enter to accept the default value for now. What file should be used for Firestore indexes? Again, just press enter for now, that's absolutely fine. And now functions set up. Now, what language would we want to write the cloud functions in? Well, we're gonna use JavaScript, but you can select TypeScript if you prefer. Do you want to use ESLint? Yes. And do you want to install the dependencies with NPM? Now, these dependencies are for cloud functions and I do want to install them now so nothing goes wrong later on. So press enter and that's gonna install all the things we need for cloud functions to work later on. Okay, and now it's saying, what do we want to use as the public directory? Now, this public directory is the thing that is eventually deployed to Firebase servers. So it's gonna contain things like our index file, other HTML files, CSS, maybe some front-end JavaScript, all that stuff. I'm gonna keep this as public, so press enter. And do we want to configure this as a single page app? Well, no, we don't, because that kind of stuff is for things like view applications. So I'm gonna press no, and then press enter. And now it's created this project for us on the front end. Now I want to open up Visual Studio Code in this directory. So all I'm gonna do is say code and then dot to open up in this directory. That opens VS Code for us. If you prefer, you can do it manually, really doesn't matter. And now we can see we have this project right here with a functions directory for cloud functions, a public directory. That's everything that's deployed, remember, to the Firebase servers when we deploy this website. Currently just an index file and a 404 file. We also have this Firebase RC file, and that says which project we're connecting to on the back end. Remember, that's what we called it. And we also have a git ignore because we don't want to upload a load of stuff to version control. We also have this firebase.json file as well, and that just declares some different properties about our Firebase project. We have this firestore.indexes file and also firestore.rules. Remember, these are our database rules. So let me just zoom in a little bit first of all. Now inside the public folder, we can see we have these two HTML files. This is what a user is gonna see when they go to a page that doesn't exist, the 404 page, and this one right here is gonna be the index page. Now I'm gonna leave the 404 as it is because I'm really not concerned with that, but what I am gonna do is delete most of the stuff inside this file. So I'm just gonna start up here, like so, and I'm gonna go all the way down to the closing body. Now we do need to create our opening body tag because we just deleted that, so let me do that. Body, and I'm gonna change this over here to tutorial requests. And then now we need to go back over here and we need to go to the project overview, go to our app that we set up, click on the cog, and then come down here where we need to grab these things right here. So remember, these are the scripts we had to paste in the front end. So I'm gonna grab them by copying them and come back over here. And then at the bottom of the body, 
I'm going to paste those in. Let me just scoot those in a little bit as well. Okay, so we have this script right here. This is the core Firebase library, and we need to use this no matter what we do on the front end. Okay, so we do that first of all, then we initialize our Firebase app right at the bottom. We need that as well. Now, in between these things right here, this is where we import the specific libraries that we want. So we import a library, for example, for authentication, one for the Firestore, and one for functions. So what I'm going to do is just copy these from my repo, and I'm going to paste them right here. So delete that and paste them in like so. Okay. So I'm going to paste in this comment as well. So copy and paste. And that is pretty much done. So what we're doing is importing Firebase Auth, Firebase Firestore, and Firebase Functions. We're going to need all of these going forward later on. And by the way, all of these links are on the Firebase docs. Okay, so that is Firebase on the front end pretty much set up now. We can now go out and communicate with our back end because we've initialized our app on the front end right here and we're importing these scripts that we need to use the different services. Now, what I'm going to do is a little h1 here, and that just says tutorial requests, like so. Then I want to preview this in a browser. Now, we can use the Firebase CLI to do that, to spin up a local development server where we can preview this file right here or any other file inside the public folder. So I'm going to open up a terminal. You can do that by going to Terminal and New Terminal. And down here, I'm just going to say Firebase and then Serve. Make sure you're in the correct project directory. This one right here, Firebase Functions. And it's not Server, just Serve. Press Enter. This is going to spin up a local development server for you. And it's going to give you the address right here. This one, Local Server. Not the emulator. This is for testing local functions. This one. So I'm going to control click on that to open this up in a browser and it opened up over here. And now we can see we're previewing the index.html file, but we can access anything now inside the public folder. So for example, if I go to 404, which is the other page .html, press enter and we see this HTML page instead. Okay. So there we go, my friends, we've set up Firebase now on the back end and on the front end. And next up, we're going to create a front end template for this project.